It, it worked! worked. Alright, so I'm Jesse. And I'm Mr. G. And we made a working electric lawnmower from, what would you say, scratch? Yeah, I mean, we changed it completely. The only thing is that we didn't change the operation. The blade works as functioning before. We just changed the input to the blade. And this was kind of a, we, we took a little bit of a roundabout process, right? We started over here with this crazy conversion. And this was, you know, it's a kind of a proof of concept. Don't call this crazy. Well, I mean. This is my baby. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, this is a proof of concept. It's yeah. just to show that it works. It's just to show that um, it's a great visual tool because obviously you, you've seen a 12 volt battery before and you've seen a drill before. We introduced this concept of mm -hmm. uh, an inverter. Remember, we have a piston delete. Right. We got rid of the head. We yeah, got rid so of the piston. If you look in here, there's no piston there. Right. And you were saying that we even got rid of part of the crankshaft. You had to balance the crankshaft. Yes. I, I had to know that. So we went from. from well, we started with a working engine, completely tore it apart, broke it, right? Mm -hmm. Then we get this, which is a visual uh, prototype, a working prototype. Yeah. So we know that we can power it electrically because we did. You know what was nice about this, Jesse, is that we got to measure the watts. We put the kilowatt on there, and once we knew how many watts, then we could size the battery appropriately. Right, and we kind of had an idea of how many uh, watts we'd be drawing here. So then let's talk about this. This is a completely different beast. Th there's no drill. Like, right. look at the difference in size between this motor and the drill. The motor inside the drill is tiny. It's like, what, maybe an inch and a half diameter, two inches? Yeah, probably. And this is, uh, what? Four and a half. Four and a half? Yeah, about four. So. This is a serious difference in terms of size. You know, we're going from something this size, which worked. We yeah. were able to power it yeah. using this. And then we went up to this larger motor mm -hmm. and then we did this battery pack. Now let's talk about the battery pack for a minute. This was made out of modem batteries. Yeah. These cells came out of modems. Wait, so you guys sourced them, right? So where'd you get all that? So we got these batteries from uh, batteryhookup.com. Oh yeah, it's Tom. A, Tom uh, down in Philly, right? Yeah, he's close. He's in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. There you go. And yeah, so he gets all of these modem batteries and, and lots of other batteries too. And then he sells them at really nice prices. And that's how we were able to basically afford so many 18650 cells. So what do you do? You just pick it out and they shift it to you? Yeah. So, you know, we broke apart the packs in the modems. Okay. We got the cells, the right. battery cells, and then we just put the battery cells together in a different configuration. And now we're cutting lawns with it. How did you know the cells were any good? Um, we actually tested them. We were getting about 2,500 milliamp hours a piece. So we knew that these would work. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, it just feels like cheating. Yeah. I mean, we took, too easy. we took something out of a modem yeah. and we made a lawnmower out of it. Yeah, and they were recycling it anyway. That's what, what I think what you're buying from, from Tom or any type of battery recyclers. Right. You're just getting stuff that people aren't using anymore. But this is crazy because this was in a modem. This stuff is in laptops. It just, the, the difference between a modem, this boring thing that sits in your house, doesn't move. It's just, you know... <laughs> That's all it's doing all day long. This was just to back up the modem. This wasn't even used in the, in the everyday, you know, operation of the modem. This was just in case of a power outage, it would power the modem. But it's just, it feels like cheating to me. It's just crazy that they put these batteries that can do this much stuff in a modem. That's amazing. And I want to point out here, yeah. we are not experts. This isn't our 100th battery pack that we've made. This was our first battery pack that we made. And I'll be honest, I've been playing around with electric cars for a very long time, but I was focused on the mechanics of it. And I never really got into the batteries until now. Yeah. And I gotta tell you, Jesse, you're right. It's absolutely amazing the power you have in just one cell. And then when you put it in series or parallel, you can gain amps and you can gain voltage depending on what you want to do. You can change the form factor. It doesn't have to be a brick. It could be, you can even go around in a circle if you wanted to. Right. That's a good point as well. I mean, yeah, <laughs> we were looking at, you know, you could put them all in a, you in a put long, them in long pipe. Remember you set them up like that? Yeah. We've I done could. a lot of stuff over the last couple of days. I know. And that's the cool part to me is that we're not experts. We're not brilliant geniuses, mm -hmm. right? We're pretty. Wow. You know, <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> I'm just saying with a little bit of help um, from 
online research, we were able to put this together. It didn't blow up. It didn't catch on fire. We didn't electrocute mm -hmm. ourselves. We were careful. Hey, failure's a chance to learn, yeah. <laughs> you know? Unless you electrocute yourself and yeah. die. Well, look, the thing about electricity is everything fails and you could get electrocuted. Just don't be in the way. Right. So that's all it is. The circuit doesn't care about you is if, it's, if you're not in line. So, I mean, we got to chalk this one up as a win because yeah. we were able to cut grass for 25 minutes. The yeah. battery still had power. We ran out of grass of before we ran out of power. It, it, wasn't a right, it wasn't a small property. Like it had a section over here, a section over here, a section in the back. Like, yep. and, and you never, sure it got bogged down a little bit, but there wasn't a point where it didn't work. It did cut grass yes. and it cut at a length that was reasonable. I wanna ask you guys, what, what do you think worked? What do you think didn't work? What do you think we could improve upon? This is clearly not uh, we're not ready to go selling this, yeah. you know, mass producing, you know, a plywood box with some batteries in it and a motor that's bolted on. Proof of concept. It's a, it's pretty close to a prototype at this point. Yeah. All know? right. So Mr. G, what's one thing that we could have done better here? All right. So first of all, the box is great and it, it's strapped right onto the adapter with, uh, with little L brackets. Okay. But the, the problem I had with it was I didn't know the temperature. And so, uh, you know, I felt the top of this was getting hot. That means if I could feel it here, that means down inside where the battery is on the cell level, it's definitely getting hot. And you want to monitor temperature. So I think next time, either we have a box that breathes or we have a temperature sensor. Okay. That would be my next move. That makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah. We just threw this together because we were so excited to get it out on yeah, the fields. Yeah. Uh, but definitely you want some ventilation in there. You know, you could go nuts, you could do some liquid cooling. So Jesse, what, what, what Tesla does to monitor their cells, first of all, they have temperature sensors, but also through weaving through, just like on an engine, well, this is an air-cooled engine, but on a liquid cooled engine, there's what's called a water jacket. It's like this, mm -hmm. it covers around all the hot parts, right? And it's water. And you're hot, but you gotta cool down. But so imagine the jacket had a, had a water thing so flowing through it. It's the opposite of a jacket. Instead of being insulative, it's conductive ah. in order to conduct the heat away from the battery pack. You know, you impress me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that would help cool it down uh, if we wanted to go that far. Right. What else could we do to keep the temperatures cooler um, from a cell level? Well, you could do uh, an aluminum case or you could do, uh, let's see, you could have air cooled. What, yeah. about, what about putting more batteries in parallel? Mm. Would that lower the, the pack temperature because it would be drawing less amps? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, if you got the room, you could go, right, exactly. The more amps you draw, the more, the more it's gonna cost you in heat, absolutely. And so if we had, instead of doing 4P, four in parallel, yeah. if we had gone 10 in parallel, Oh, yeah. So, I mean, first of all, you'd be adding a lot more in terms of capacity. So, yep. it, you'd be able to mow the lawn a much longer period of time, but also each cell is going to be doing less work. Absolutely, right. So, we ran it for 25 minutes and we were getting down to around like 32 volts. Um, how much longer do you think we could have run it? My estimate, I think another 10 to 15 minutes. But the, the pack that we built using 52 18650 cells, but keeping in mind, obviously, the capacity of each cell. So mm -hmm. we were around 2,500 milliamps per cell. If you're using those kinds of cells and you have the same configuration 13S 4P that we were doing, so you can go like, you know, 30, 40 minutes. Yeah. And that's pretty good. I mean, most gas mowers don't take much more than that. So now there's, there's just a couple other things that we did that a lot of people would have trouble doing. Right, there's a couple of unique parts on here. So let's, let's show those. All right, so one of the things that we did that a lot of people are gonna have trouble doing if they're just kind of like at home is making adapters mm -hmm. for the electric motors. Because uh, when you're talking about a gas engine, especially a lawnmower gas engine, yeah. uh, they have particular bolt layouts. And you can see the bolt layout here, right? Mm -hmm. One hole, two hole, and I think one of these was This was has the a other double one. pattern on it. You're going to have different patterns depending on if you're hooking up to a transmission on a car or you're hooking up to the deck of a mower. There's always a bolt pattern. Right. And the problem that we ran into is that our electric motor has a completely different size and completely different bolt pattern yeah. than a mower because it wasn't really made to be dropped into. Right. 
a gas mower. And so what we had to do is actually build this whole part right here, which bolts on the other side of the deck, mm -hmm. bolts up there, and you can see the bolts here, and then comes down here and forms the plate that we need. And you actually had to, we have to drop it down because the shaft of this motor isn't long enough. Yeah, so things you gotta worry about is your, the, the motor face, mm -hmm. okay? Now some of them are standard, but they're definitely not gonna be the same as your gas engine plate, yeah. right? So the motor face, and some of them are, are go by NEMA ratings, which you can look up, you know, they have different ratings, okay? And they have different patterns. But the other thing was your depth where the blade sits, you always want to bring your vehicle back to stock. Yep. Okay, so where this blade sits in relation to, uh, you know, vertical. Right, because we don't want to be cutting the grass way up here. Yeah. Um, we're not going to be cutting any grass, no matter how low we set the deck. Right. That's not going to do anything. And we don't want it out here. Mm -hmm. um, if you had a motor with a very long shaft and you were cutting grass below the depth of the wheels, you're, that's not a mower anymore, that's a hole digging machine. Right. So right. we had to, yeah, definitely do a lot of measurements, a lot of thinking, and a lot of work to make this adapter plate. So for the viewers at home, yeah. what skills do you need in order to build something like this? Okay, you're gonna need to know how to cut metal and weld it, okay? You're also gonna need, either you do it or you're gonna need access to a lathe or a mill. Okay, so basically you need metal fabrication capability. So to build this, I used welding. Okay, we're in a garage here. This is not a special place. It just has some cutting, grinding. I have a I bolt to the bench, but I definitely brought with me a welder and I used it to put this together. Okay, so you used welding. Could you make this out of wood? Possibly. Possibly. So, I mean, if, if you really wanted to do it, yeah. there, there could be some other ways of accomplishing this without going to the extremes that you went to. Right. You don't have to have a welder, but it does make it for a tighter package. If you had wood, you'd probably have to be thicker. Right. I'm not sure how I would go about that. Right. And you're a metal guy. Yeah, I'm a, you know. So that, that's the way that you chose to go. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, there definitely could be a way you could come down from these bolts with, with some standoffs. Yeah. Um, to get the height right, and yeah. then you could have a plate there. Yeah. It's all about being smart, being safe, um, and being resourceful. And Jesse, keep in mind, this is all made out of a uh, two inch flat bar that I bent around and then made these flat pieces, then I cut it off. So it was, it was all made out of available material. You could buy this stuff at like Home Depot, uh, whatever. You know, okay, it's not so you like, don't have to have some Yeah, it's like, not super unique. Right, you're not calling up a McMaster car with yeah. a custom order and they're right. gonna be you know, shipping it out to you. Yeah. So that's, that's good to know, but there's one other piece that we needed to fabricate for this yeah. that was a bit more complicated, and that is this guy right here, this round uh, steel piece. So that is our blade coupler. And so you can find blade couplers but they are made for gas engines. So if we tilt this mower back, you see that obviously this is a gas mower and they specifically have a fitting piece. Um, but again, they sell different ones for different mowers. This one fits very well. There you go. And so you can see that we can turn the mower and the mower can turn the blade. Yep. But the problem was with our electric motor, this didn't fit. Right. And so we needed to make a custom piece. The shaft was completely different. Instead of a, a shaft with a keyway, it was a D shaft and it was a different size completely. So what I did was I said, I, I didn't have access to a lathe at that point. So what I did was I said to my friend and I said, uh, that's that shaft and this shape, go. <laughs> Literally, I just gave him two measurements and he made everything in between, which looks like this. Right, and so that's probably gonna be the most difficult part for anyone who's trying to work on this themselves. Right. Now, is there any other way, if you don't have any metal fabrication skills, to get from your motor to this piece? I mean, could we order some kind of uh, adapter itself? So, okay, so a lot of times you can, from a master car, they have, uh, couplers that have one side and it's different from the other side and there's like a spider in between but I just couldn't find it there was nothing available believe me I looked the last thing you want to do is make custom parts unless you have to yeah so buy everything you can until you can't and then you need a fabricator thanks for watching join us next time as we continue our adventures on the conversion garage <laughs>